Have you ever wanted to be Romanian? Of course not. Well, have you ever wanted to be dead? Welcome to Total War, Warhammer 3, where as hard as it is to believe, today we will be playing as someone who is both. Today we'll be exploring the new Champions of Undeath, free mod, and what it has to offer. This mod adds many new vampire lords, many new units, and some rather unique mechanics for us to play around with. Will we be able to devour the world with our hordes of undead, or will we be sent straight back to the mortuary? Only time will tell. So, let us begin. Before we start with our conquests and capers, I must first introduce our legendary lord, that being the hot, sexy big man himself, Walla Karkin, leading the equally hot and sexy Blood Dragons. Who are the Blood Dragons? Well basically, they're like other vampires, but cooler, and like the other vampires, also start in the Empire. How fun. But what is our goal? Our goal is to rebuild the great ordos of the Blood Dragons and recruit various new lords to our cause, which may even be more based than Wallach himself. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start this story at the beginning, in the Black Mountains. In the beginning, we zero our target on the first piece of meat we find, and that is the midgets. Now as we're playing the vampire counts, we run into the exact same issue as the regular vampire counts, and that's the crucial lack of ranged units. This of course makes fighting in these early battles an absolute pain, since we essentially need to be kissing our opponents to get anything done. Though it was a tough battle, we emerged victorious and went on to siege a nearby settlement, which is as fun as you can expect. But again, we ended up victorious. After, we are given options to create one of three types of blood keep, sack or raise the settlement. Contrary how most campaigns start, I burn the settlement to the ground and begin my crusade into the Empire. During our travels, we pass by Balthazar Gelt of the Virgin Order. Keep him in mind, as he will become somewhat of a reoccurring character. But some of you might be wondering, why, oh why, am I moving up to Wiesenland? And I have two reasons. To kick Eben von Liebowitz in the booty hole, and to take the grand city of Nuln, and secure it as my first settlement. Why Nuln? Well, there's a very good reason for that, and it's that the Blood Dragons are a bunch of nerds who spend their days going around looking for their books. These books inspire them to such a degree that it not only allows them to field another army, but it also unlocks various missions for us to complete. Like this mission, where I get jumped by a rival gang of dead men. However, they come bearing such high-tech equipment, like flintlock pistols, and whatever the hell this thing is. When we were quaking in our bones, afraid all was lost, Big Daddy Aberash came from the sky and turned the tide in our favor. With this win, we were able to convince Aberash to join our side. Now because he is incredibly cool, and the first blood dragon, Wallach now takes a back seat in his own campaign, as Aberash takes the entire faction and all of Wallach's units. Whilst this family reunion was a sight to behold, there was a similar reunion going on down south. See, part of Empire AI is that when one of their butt buddies like Eben mysteriously vanish, <laughs> like I don't know where he went, <laughs> how strange, one of the AI will take the Ray settlement and rebuild their place in the Empire, somehow bringing Eben back to life. However, this gives us a great opportunity to kick him in the ass yet again. This of course adds yet another target to our conquests, and talking about target, Big Man Gelt thinks that he can walk into my territory as well. Now I want you to guess how well that went. We next commence battle on the targets that have slighted us, starting with Averheim, which went down without too much of a fight, making way for our second settlement. And then back to our old friend, who was freshly out of his coffin, just waiting for us to throw him back in. After this, we continue to bully the rest of the Empire by declaring war on even more states. However, this did not come without consequence, as Mr. Empire himself was sick of our tomfoolery. But we weren't only making enemies, as good old Vladdy had come to us with friendship. Now near turn 20, and you might wonder why I have no territory. And it's because settling territory with this faction requires dragon scales. Dragon scales for which I am in a tad bit of a deficit. Now the only way we can get these highly sought after scales is to build a structure on Aberash's Horde settlement that will give us two scales per turn, effectively self-sustaining our growth. Or defeating faction leaders, and considering that I don't have enough scales or money to make that building. Option 2 is the only choice. The more intuitive among you might have noticed that a certain someone is back from the grave a third time, and realized what I am doing. 
Yes, I am purposely crippling the empires around me, leaving them with only one settlement and waiting until their faction leader respawns, only to slaughter them to get those tasty scales. The grind truly is real. At this point, we were at war with half the empires in the area, and what's one more, as Scrag the Slaughterer is planting his greasy little piggies on my land. So I killed him, rejected his offer of peace, and burned his house down. A rather reasonable reaction. But a not so reasonable reaction came from a group of vampire hunters, who have popped up nearby to put an end to our shenanigans. Let's just say, I don't believe they got the outcome that they were expecting. Through these various trials and tribulations, I was able to finally pull together the money and scales to upgrade Aberash's camp, allowing us to generate two scales per turn. Now the game can truly begin. And as a gift for this mighty fine accomplishment, Scrag gives us 7,000 big ones. Thanks, buddy. I'll leave you alone for now. But whilst we were distracted with fat men, we did not account for the embodiment of Sigma himself, Karl Franz, to arrive, to which, of course, we fight and crush, adding yet another head to Abrash's ever-growing repertoire. After this, we put Balthazar Gelt down yet again for the final time. Poor guy can't get a break. After multiple turns, Abrash got a bit too pent up and ended up declaring war on both the midget people and the tree huggers. Doing this also got the attention of the rat men, who declared their friendship to me, which I accepted with open arms. For now. Hey look, it's the tree man. Tree man wants peace? Nah, I'm gonna burn your house down. Abrash, on the other hand, is having a fantastic time down south, bullying the midgets and vampire hunters. So hard, in fact, that the dwarves kind of died. Seeing our incredible success and conquests, Vlad breaks off our non-aggression pact. A terrible omen, indeed. Do you know what's not a terrible omen? Liking the video and subscribing to the channel, one could say it makes you even more attractive. Want a girlfriend? Done. Want plentiful wealth and riches? Done. Want to be accepted into the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts? Uh... So what are you waiting for? Hit those buttons like they're your newborn child. The time has come when we have to exterminate the natives, so we choose a horde of greenskins and begin our attack. And because I suck at this game, all I really do is flounder around until I put the big man down. Success soon follows, as well as a brand new weapon, and like a Barbie doll, Aberash is ours to pick and choose our customizations to be the best little lord he can be. But much to my chagrin, the terrible day had come. Vlad had declared war, and while quaking in my boots, for about three seconds, it all immediately went away since our bordering settlement acted as a meat grinder, constantly butchering their armies as they came. And as I said before that I was bad at the game, God knows I'm not going to attempt this heroic victory legit, but I decide to completely ignore Vlad and instead go after the more important threat, the French. This would be the time where I'd place the voice of an angry Frenchman, but for my own sanity, I don't know any Frenchman. At this point, I'm fighting a war on about four fronts. The Empire up top, the Elves in the forest, Grom and the French in Bretonia, and Vlad, who's still going at it, bless his heart. And after taking Castle Baston from Grom, he then decides to leave a nuke that proceeds to crash my game every time I interact with it. He then has the gall to dip out of our conflict. Uh, no. We then get approached by a homeless man wanting my shit. Loan also too has had enough and wants to dip out. This is my response. Vlad for some reason has been consistently killing his armies by sending them at our settlement and it appears to have taken a toll as his strength has gone from this to this. In exchange for peace, he offers 10,000 big ones, and while very tempting, I like seeing my enemies in pain. Aberash, however, has decided to go on a journey to acquire more drip. This consists of us fighting two armies of various sizes. First were the vampire hunters, who almost immediately ate dirt. Second were the rats, who were just peacefully performing their magical death ritual, for which we so rudely interrupted. They tried to defend themselves with whatever the hell this thing is, but it was all for naught, as Aberash had acquired the mad drip. I began this turn not being content with the at least six other empires I was at war with, so I decided to, for no reason in particular, declare war on the only friends I had and proceed to wipe them off the face of the map. Let's tune back to war number three of five and look, it's Vlad. And Aberash is not happy. So not happy, in fact, that he just murders him. Who would have thought? Because of this blunder on his half, we then proceed to take all his shit. In a last ditch effort, he tries to make peace uh, no. However, despite all of our successes, we still get the ominous message. The hippies are returning. Considering that the world was about to be overrun by Greenpeace, I needed to get my affairs in order. The man with a funny name up north had declared war on me, 
Yeah, okay, buddy. We also sent Fritz Jaeger, this lovely lad, through a tentacle portal so we can go to war with a threat I consider even greater than the hippies. More French people. But whilst I was enjoying my time butchering the French, the hippies had awakened, and they seemed to want revenge for my past actions. Now for a bit of perspective, at this point in the game I controlled all of the Empire and all of Bretonia. This event respawns all five major Wood Elf factions in the game, for which three of the five are in my territory, and one more is directly on my border. No matter. Time to get to work. At this point I had multiple armies down south dealing with Scrag. I begin to move them up to the forest to teach these rascals the same lesson a second time. On the same turn Aberash was in a prime location to move down and take Laurelon Forest. This battle consisted of our army tanking a barrage of arrows with absolutely no counter apart from our cavalry and hoping to waddle close to them. But an upside is that the moment Aberash killed Horse Lady their entire army fell apart. Back down to Atheloran and a big brolic man challenges one of my armies to battle and almost immediately gets decked. After this my armies proceed to purge the rest of Atheloran of any hippie stragglers. Thankfully due to the competency of other empires on the map the last two wood elf strongholds are quickly dealt with which means there was only one left. Throwing all my armies at the issue, we quickly take chunks of their land. Here is where Dreicher employs the ever effective tactics of the Vietnamese, however to no avail. Between taking all of their territory, I send Aberash to strike at the heart of the Wargrave of Woe, that being Griffin Wood. The battle can only be described as a slaughter, or I guess a felling, because those trees ate dirt. After this climactic battle, it was up to us to clean the mess, and after we had taken Kislev, that was it. We had achieved our ultimate campaign victory. Aberash and the Blood Dragons had truly devoured all who opposed them and were now able to bring about their radical new world.